Hello, ladies and gentlemen. The University of Sacramento, st state, sorry, state, Sacramento State University is changing their history department class requirements. Me being a history guy, professor and teacher, and doing all the, and going through those classes, oh, this reeks of some massive shit. Because what they're doing now is, for the general ed, instead of having a history course, they're doing an anthropology course. We're changing the requirements. And most times when they change the requirements, I don't really... Sometimes I bat an eye, sometimes I look at it and roll my eyes, but this is very disconcerting because the Sacramento uh, University was changing... Oh, you can have an anthropology course for a history course that take the place of a history course for history. I'm sorry, these two things are not the goddamn same. And they said, oh... As it stands, the anthropology course, or class, sorry, I'm, I'm going to be interchanging, but will repeatedly focus on intersections of race, class, gender, ethnicity, sexuality, the political economy of institutions and ideas such as racism, classism, sexism, stereotypes, family, religion, color, blindness, multiculturalism. Holy crap, that's a load of shit. And bullshit. Okay? These courses pretty much will be this new quote-unquote history course removes the progressive era world war one suffrage movement the great depression fdr the new deal world war two mccarthyism cold war korea war nuclear arms race cuban missile crisis jfk uh yeah i keep on going the berlin berlin wall collapse the gulf war globalization 9 11 and the wars in afghanistan and iraq what the fuck is wrong with you okay we're gonna bring in sexism this this is this destroys history this is what they're offering and it teaches nothing with history it's a worth it. here's the thing anthropology is what it is it's not a bad class for anthropology it's meaningless and pointless to actually put it in a replacement for history you can have it in addition to that's a completely different story if you in addition of adding stuff to it. But no, otherwise, it's fucking bullshit. This class, these two do not equal, they don't, they do not do the same thing. They're completely different classes. The reason why it's fucking anthropology. A good history teacher brings more to places and dates, and quite honestly, these earlier classes, there's a lot of too much names and dates bullshit put in there teaching it and being in it there's a lot of issues with it you got to teach them to understand it and pretty much they point out later, later on california state law requires that all campuses must provide for a comprehensive study of american history and american governments including historical developments of american institutions and ideals the constitution of the u.s the operation of representative democratic government under the Constitution. It's a republic, but okay, fine. A representative, dem democratic, you're, you're pretty much right in that sense, but I'd say a republic. Constitutional federalized republic would be a better and clearer definition of it. Yeah, I'm a history nut. You're going to get that shit. And, yes, this is bullshit. With the history chair of Sacramento State agrees with the uh, that a anthropology course is not suitable substitute in the U.S. history, one. Yeah, fucking duh. It doesn't take a brainiac. And the fuckers who are trying to do this, fucking fire them. These are incompetent twats. They need to be removed. And it says, the law says we have to do it. It's pretty much, um, it, it, it was, it's been interpreted for 50, 40 or 50 years in a very a common sense way. The students take you as history courses, and that's not too difficult to understand. Here, some anthropo anthropology department scholar have said they feel that Anthropology 101 is more than sufficient. Yeah, the Anthropology Department saying their shit is sufficient. And, I'm sorry, race, creed, gender, sexuality, that's a fucking feminist course, you stupid twat. Jesus Christ, I have the urge to drink. This is not even funny. This is for, coming from a history guy here, a history professor, a teacher. I've done teaching. I use different means to teach kids and students, and I'm trying to introduce it to college. Are you fucking kidding me, California? 
Please fall off into the Pacific Ocean. Your idiocy is not needed here. You're fucking fucking things up. For Christ's sakes, this is beyond contemptible. This is just a feminist course. That bullshit put in there is fucking worthless in historical context. Okay? Feminism is not a lens to look through. It does not help anyone. It is a meaningless philosophical lens to look through. It offers nothing. And many of those who do support it really don't have never really taken a modern feminist course or an are an ideological individual who wants to push their ideology forward. Okay? Quite honestly, that is damning and dangerous to f have people understand their past and history. This is whitewashing history. And guess what? Those periods, this, the 20th century is another tumultuous century. And guess what? All those wars, guess what's shown? Male disposability. Men being butchered and slaughtered. And quite honestly, not even willingness to understand and supplanting it with something else that completely destroys and erodes the notion of male victimhood and destroys the idea that men can be victims, men can be disposable. Fuck you, you cunts. I'm sorry. You want to look at the 20th century? It is some. It had some really horrible shit pop up. And guess what? Men were... You can easily see in the 20th century how disposable men are. It shows it on an unprecedented level that men were butchered in the millions. The fucking millions. Not only does it show the failures of political states of the 20th century that philosophical notions from Marxism is utterly dangerous and toxic and corrodes and kills things left and right this is what this is what you're pushing something that is gynocentric and feminist based are you insane and this idea of looking at gender race class bullshit as much as it sounds really nice and quote unquote progressive and quite honestly I'm sorry modern progressivism is not progressive it's regressive, no matter what they want to call it, because you're not looking to better people. You're looking to fucking demand people to do what you want. But here's the thing. From this point of view, our understanding distorts the understanding of the period that you're trying to understand and look at. This is the biggest issue with history teachers and professors. Trying to understand for the point of view, the perspective of the time. Be able to understand the fears and the feelings of the time and know the reasons why things happened from their point of view. Why did they choose this? A feminist perspective warps and taints that out of, out of drift. It makes it impossible to understand it. I have this problem with my colleagues, with my people I work with, people I'm at school with, and the people I teach. It's They're having a diff difficulty understanding the period, what the point of view comes from that period. They struggle with that. And a feminist point of view, a gynocentric point of view, this warping bullshit they put in there, makes it almost impossible to understand why they did it. Okay, plain and simple. It's not some of this convoluted and complex thing. You want to understand history, you have to read primary sources, and you have to try to understand it from the period's piece. It's not easy to read an old, old document from whatever period and go, okay, this is what it means, because we always look with 2020 hindsight. This style paints it through another lens, which makes it even more difficult to go realize it and understand it. Read, actually, philosophers. Read Martin Luther's works. You'll start seeing it is impossible to le read it through a lens. You have to read it from his perspective so you can understand how it came about, why he felt this way. Okay? This anthropology course, it's not giving any primary sources so you can see the period. Especially American history. American history is not as simple as many people like to think it is. There is a lot of philosophy, beliefs, and ideas molded into the American time period, especially in this. It's not that easy fucking rip apart. And when you put a fucking lens over it, you distort it to the point where people are going to be fucking confused. Okay? Plain and simple. Good history professors give primary sources, and they help the students understand the work and not drill it in. This 
anthropology is just going to drill in shit. It doesn't have you actually look at the things unbiased, looking at it and trying to find the actual goddamn truth. They're just going to say, oh, here's sexuality. Oh, see, the earlier people... Uh, let me use an um, example that I get constantly in cl- class. Well, the Founding Fathers had slaves. They must be... They're racist individuals. They're bad, 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 bad people. Well, here's the thing. When you look at the early period of United States history... I'm going before this period, but there's a point behind it. You start looking around. You start taking it apart. You see there are many laws by the Founding Fathers. Their primary source documents, how they hated slavery, but they needed the southern states to thrive. That, guess what? When the state, the United States, the United States were, was formed, they did a lot to cut themselves from the slave trade. They were trying to strangle slavery bit by bit. They were trying to make an environment so it could not thrive. For fucking Christ's sake. Just that alone completely is whitewashed and distorted from history. Okay? That is removed from history. They don't put that in there. They don't put that in there to show that, wow, the Founding Fathers actually had a disdain for slavery and racism, and they understood that, you know what, we are not technologically available. We don't have the technology to fucking stop that from happening. So we're going to do laws to slow down and mitigate and strangle it and let it die out. They actually believed, shortly after creation of the United States and its slow development and growth, that slavery would die away. As they said, it would wither upon the vine. They understood and knew how toxic and horrible it is. They also understood that a pulling out cold turkey was going to cause some irreparable damages, not only as a nation and economically, but philosophically and mentally. We're still dealing with those fucking ramifications. Problem is, with a gynocentric feminist perspective that they want to do with this anthropology course, you would never figure that out. You would never be able to look at it and understand, wow, they were doing so much trying to do it. They would say, oh, they had slaves. They must be bad. That is a fucking gynocentric, imbecilian simple, simpleton's understanding of it. Okay? It is difficult to understand the past and their perspective values at the time because we are not in that time period. We are looking back, and the further you go back, Roman history, ancient Greeks, you'll have a completely different perspective and point of view from that time. And the best thing to do is try to figure out how it worked. Try to figure out their values, their understandings, their beliefs, and look at it from their point of view, because then you could actually understand why they made these choices, why they went down this route, and why they chose it, be- and for what reasons, and if they felt, and why they felt this was the right way. Not in the simpletons, in the feminist gynocentric, oh, it's sexist, oh, it's a racist, oh, they hate homophobes. No, it's because they understood, perspectively, that, wow, we need a strong state, that we need centralization of power, because guess what? We have all these other powers coming in and jockeying for position, and if we don't do it, we will most likely be destroyed. And guess what? That is all. That is a lot of things that comes into people's minds, politically, economically, socially. Guess what? Get a good teacher who actually has you look at the time period, look at the primary documents, and explains them to you. Not telling you what they are, explains them. You will start understanding the reasons behind it, and you can see the period, why it was the way it was. The most important thing with history is not who, what, when, where, why. Who, what, when, where. It is why. That is the most important question with history. All these other things help add to the answer of why. But why is one of the most fundamental things with history. And this weird, warped, fucked up, tinted, twisted lens of feminism does not help with it. It distorts it and destroys it. History is one of those things that gets thrown to the side very, very easily. And I understand why, because so many teachers teach in a fucked up way. They make it simple. Names and dates, and nothing more. Because guess what? History is living philosophy. It's their beliefs, their ideas, made manifest. And you can see different cultures, the Roman Empire versus the Persians. You can see all these different political beliefs jockeying against each other and what happens when one culture loses how they respond to it and what they see of encroaching doom for, for be from the huns or the turks or the ottoman empire when those periods happen and that what they fear in the um um 
Reformation period, you see the Holy Roman Empire, be, Roman Empire becoming a dominant power place, and you see in the wars of religion used as a way to take down the Holy Roman Empire because the fear of a powerful state that quite honestly was equivalent to global. For fuck's sakes, that is terrifying. It explains why the political waves and movements went the way they did. Yes, I'm going back further, but the reason for that is that there is so much to understand, and this fucking bullshit anthropology course will distort any notion and understanding of history. And guess what? The 20th century shows male disposability for all it is. It does not shy away from it. You actually look at it, you see it straight up from policies. Straight up. Even feminist gynocentric policies. You start seeing what happens. And guess what? You look at that with primary source documentation. You look at that. You're able to see what we do to men. You're able to see, wow, how much we don't regard masculinity with any ounce of respect that it deserves. That we throw it to the side. We see men as disposable commodities. And that fucking bullshit anthropology course will fucking obliterate it and erase it. The thing is, that history is not is barely a hundred years old. It's within a hundred years. It's within a couple generations. And we're fucking tainting it, warping it, distorting it, and ignoring it? For fuck's sakes, men, we can take freedom. We can see logical reality, how the world works, our what happens to men in the world, how we're thrown off and on the side and easily disposable. This is fucking bullshit. This is why I love history when I got into it. You get to see so much. It is quite honestly chilling to the bone when you see it. And this class will fucking do that. It will fucking erase male disposability and make it impossible for people to understand it and put another nail in the coffin of men of harming them and hurting them and throwing them to the side, plain and simple. Thank you for listening. Please tell me what you think. And thank you and good night.